Concentrate one's forces, you could say. You can't meditate if you can't first concentrate. And um, it's interesting just to try to concentrate, as you said a few moments ago, to think on one thing for 12 seconds is <laughs> not, not easy. The mind is like a flea. It uh, jumps around from this to that, and uh, it's very hard to contain it and focus it. But that's the first step in learning to meditate, and only the first step. But some interesting things happen when you begin to develop concentration. You begin to realize that you have the power to regulate your life, to organize it, to take control of it and actually put some order to it so that you're not just drawn hither and thither by every demand upon you and every urge that you suddenly become aware of. And that's why I think the busiest people are always the ones who can get the most done because they have learned to concentrate their forces. They have learned to organize their lives and their energies. If you're one of those busy people who can always do one more thing, then you're especially well prepared to, to learn to meditate because you've already taken control of the mind to a certain extent. To concentrate means to bring together, to center or focus. In other words, to pay attention. And Alice Bailey said that meditation and concentration require that one pay attention and that one be deeply interested in something. You can't meditate if you're not deeply interested in what you're trying to focus on. And I think we people do this quite automatically already because if there are things in their life that they're deeply interested in, whatever it is, then they will put a focus on it. So mm -hmm. I think it, this is not something new Mm -hmm. uh, because so many of us do this already just by focusing on whether it's cooking, cooking in your kitchen, you're focused on cooking this meal, putting all the different uh, ingredients together and getting it cooked up properly. It takes a lot of concentration to, uh, uh, to, to pull it off. If it, otherwise, it'll be a disaster if your mind is scattered all over the place and your food burns and etc. But there are many different things even in your work life, it's your, on your job, or even on your computer working, uh, there's a chance to practice this concentration just uh, by holding the mind steady on what you're doing. Pay attention. Another aspect of learning to meditate besides developing the power of concentration is developing an ability to create solitude in one's life. That doesn't mean um, to withdraw from the world. In the ancient times and in the East, people of spiritual aspiration would develop their meditative life by withdrawing from the world. And at that time, perhaps that was a service they did for our present uh, humanity because they developed the science of meditation and um, held it in custody, so to speak, for a time now and in the recent decades when there's been a really tremendous growth of interest in meditation and applying some of the laws that were well understood uh, <coughs> by Eastern seekers. But it's also a time when the outer world is demanding more and more of our energy, getting more and more complex, more and more noisy and distracting. It's at this strange moment in human history that we find a growing interest in meditation, oddly enough. Maybe the outer din is what is drawing us to realize we need to learn to meditate, and that requires solitude and silence. Right, and also you have to remember, too, that you're when you engage in a practice of meditation like we're talking about you're building a relationship and it's this word relationship that is very crucial to uh, to advancement let's say of human consciousness you're building a relationship with the soul and which in turn will help you build the relationship to God and to the plan of God and the working out of the plan of God. 
because the soul is the mediating principle, the mediating stage between the personality life and God or the deity or whatever you want to call him. So it is, it is very um, important to understand this. You are building a relationship inward towards the inner source of your very existence. So it, it's, uh, it's a, this word relationship again uh, is um, kind of the basis for the whole working out of the plan. It's interesting that you mm. say that because you make me um, remember that recently, the past year or two, there have been two best-selling books on um, the bestseller lists saying that uh, religion is a waste of time and that there is no God. Uh, Christopher Hitchens and Richard Dawkins, I think, have written books on this subject. And yet, whether or not one believes their premise, it doesn't prevent one from believing that there is an inner divinity or an inner uh, value within each of us that is worth searching out. And I think that's what you're touching on in what you're saying, that there is more to us than just our body, our emotions, our concrete mind. If you have any interest at all in rediscovering, because at one time on the inner realms you did know this, if you want to rediscover the rest of yourself, you have to begin to meditate. And that's the adventure, I think, of the practice of meditation. You become aware of how much more there is to your existence and how much more you know and understand, you would be surprised. It's like opening a, a, a dam. Well, yes, I mean, because we tend to think that this physical, tangible world is the world of reality. This is what reality is. But in fact, it's only a small fraction of the inner spiritual reality with a capital R. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where the real reality exists because that's where you exist uh, and your soul self, and that's where everything in the form world begins. It begins with ideas, with concepts, with um, the <coughs> with with the uh, motivation of energy, there's with the creation of energies. There's a lot more to be said about the developing of ideas and concepts through meditation. Next time. Mm -hmm. Please take advantage of our free offer from Lucy's Trust, and that is the uh, introductory booklet called uh, on meditation. It's absolutely for free. All you need to do is give us a call at uh, the following number: one eight six 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 nine five eight two four seven. The easy way to remember it is one eight six six N Y Lucy. Think of one eight six six New York Lucy L U C I S. You've been listening to Inner Sight. Now we would like to close with a world prayer called the Great Invocation. It's a call for light and love and goodwill to flow into the world and into our hearts. Let's listen for a moment to these powerful words. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.